Put your rod tip straight out, boss. Green rod, put it down. Out, 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 out. All right, Miata. Whose line is that? Am I under or over? Over, 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 over. Oh, shit. I'm Harry Markaria. Sport fishing isn't just about reeling in that trophy fish. The real catch is in the galley. The boat burger. It's not just a burger, it's a lifestyle. So I recruited my buddies, Slim Art and Gigo, to find the best boat burgers. Join us on our mouth-watering journey on some of the best sport fishing boats out there. We'll fish. <laughs> oh, you took it. We'll eat. The fishing is my favorite part of the burger trip. And enjoy the fruits of our labor. This is Boat Burgers. So this trip is kind of cool and special and different a little bit than the other ones because one, Gigo wasn't in town. I wrangled up a few of my friends and a couple guys that have never eaten a boat burger, so I think that's really cool. The only thing they've done is catch trout, and now they're out there hunting for like 60, 70, 80 pound bluefin, and that's a whole nother dynamic, you know? Well, that was my first time leaving out of Newport to go on a deep sea fishing trip like that. You know, we got there at night, Newport Landing is a beautiful place. There's a lot of life. It's a good place to go fish out of too because it's really convenient for some of the islands. So it's actually a very good location. From there we got on the boat, took off, got bait, went southbound, went a long way all the way into Mexico. <laughs> Overnight trips are a little bit different. Uh, you get to, depending on what type of fish is going on, you get to travel a greater distance. You, you get to sometimes have longer fish time. In this case, we have a shorter fish time. So we're going like 80, 75 to 80 miles out, maybe more. And uh, we're going after these bluefin. We're going after yellowfin bluefin and uh, some yellowtail in the mix. Last time on the Poseidon, I got the first yellowtail and a few other people caught a few yellows. Ardo didn't catch anything <laughs> and I know it got to him. At one point, he, you know, he thought he was cursed. So, shit, <laughs> see, Let's talk about the devil. <laughs> Perry and I have been fishing forever from fishing on piers and rocks to Abalone Cove. And, you know, we've been through it all, bro. Ardo and I have been fishing together for well over 15 years. We've had our fair share out at sea. We've done some crazy shit. We've had arguments on the boat that have turned into the Royal Rumble. And it's awesome, man, because you know, these are your once-in-a-lifetime friends that everyone should hold on together and buy them a Christmas card or something. Yeah, so it was about 6.30 in the morning. We were in the zone. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you immediately get the smell of the grill. Their bunk room is inside the galley, so that food is just blowing through that hole. While everyone's trying to get in their breakfast before we actually start fishing. Cole makes a really good breakfast sandwich. I'm a super breakfast sandwich guy. As much as I love boat burgers, I love breakfast sandwiches. Oh yeah, this is bomb. This is my style. I like it with the, um, with the lettuce tomato inside. So some guys make it with the hash brown and, and um, the sausage scramble. And it, yeah, I like it like a sandwich like that, you know? With the buttery sourdough. It has a whole different dimension to your sandwich, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the way to start your morning. Thank <laughs> you. 
a nice pull. Traveling nine hours, having that four hour fishing time, every single person working on that boat is on deck, uh, either with somebody pulling up fish, working on tangles. Brian, Cole, second captain, are out there, you know, making sure everyone's okay. Those guys make sure you get on fish, you know, and you have a really good time. Brian especially, you know, there's a lot of pressure on that guy, uh, considering the four hour gap mindset. All he can do is hope that they bite, and that guy worked super hard and was stuck through it for four, four and a half hours straight. They're working really hard not to lose a single fish on that boat, no matter the tangle, no matter anything that's happening. Put the rocket straight out, Mom. Green rock, put it down. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. My under, over. Over, 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 over. Oh, shit. Go like this. Go. Where am I going? Yeah, yeah you're going under me. Let's go. I ain't doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> these bluefin, they'll do like these big circles on the way up. So while it's doing that circle, if you're next to it or you're around it, you will get caught on it. It was combat fishing to the fullest. People are fighting over each other, over, under, move out of my way. Your time gap from fishing is this much. Your journey is this much. So in those four hours, you better be dedicated to fishing if you want to go home with a fish. It was super bumpy out there. But I think there was like eight, nine foot swells and we were just going through it. The boat was just going up and going down. Oh! Yeah! I mean, all kinds of characters come with us. I mean, you got Carlos, the, the pirate tail, and Marina Del Rey. This guy is a fucking character. I mean, he lives on an island somewhere that comes up in the middle of the night and then sinks back down during the day. He was a monster. I've been fishing with a lot of people, but this guy was a character, you know. Fuck it, leader. Fuck it, So I guess there's a rite of passage that these fishermen have. You know, you catch that big fish, you're gonna eat the fucking heart. You know, rub that shit on your face. But in reality, dude, like, it tastes like a fucking muffler, dude. Like iron, dude. Just nasty. How does that feel? And yeah, I have ate a heart, but I won't do it again. It was pretty terrible. If everyone doesn't communicate, whoa, uh, then everyone's kind of doomed. I mean, just look around. They're, everyone's so close to each other. The weather's really bumpy too. Um, Got to stay on top of it. Oh. That's why it's so important to keep your line tight. Especially when it's like aggressive fishing like this. Oh, head shakes, we got bit. Bit, 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 bit. Oh. Shit. I got bit. Got bit. What does that mean you got bit? What does it mean? That's what it means. So the first time I stepped foot on the boat was about three years ago. It was the first boat out of 30 years of fishing that I went on by myself. You know, usually I'd be going with a friend or especially my dad. He battled some health conditions, you know, that, that put him on the edge of dying. He was hospitalized for a while and uh, I didn't know if I was gonna have a dad anymore. The good thing was that he made it out okay and he's been doing great. First charter we did when he got back because he was itching to fish. Man, that guy didn't fish for like four years because of his health conditions. And I made a charter on the Thunderbird and he, we went out on an overnight trip to San Clemente. We had a blast. It was just really nice to see my pops out there on the water. It's good memories for me. You know, I always grew up doing jewelry. Since I was about five years old, that's what I love to do. He said, Dad, can I size the ring? I go, yeah, here, do it. And then he goes, what? He goes, Dad, what about if I melt the ring? What about if I melt the shank? I go, it's OK, do it. You melt the shank, I'll fix it. Don't worry about it. Well, first time I take him fishing, he was two years old. Until now, I remember he was wearing a jacket kind of thing with a beanie. I look at him, I go, like, look at this guy. It's not even moving. You know, kids, like two years old. You know, what am I holding this, you know? I was waiting patiently, I go, He's got it. My relationship with Pops has been super tight since day one. He put a fishing rod in my hand when I was two years old. So ever since I was able to walk, 
I was his partner in crime. Luckily, I understood what fishing was all about then, and I didn't give it up because now it's turned into a real passion. Nice! Yeah. You're on this fish for 45 minutes to an hour because you don't want to lose it. That's big, dude. You know, you don't want to be like Slim Art. That day I caught one early in the morning, but it broke off immediately. It's like bad enough. I don't, I don't want to hear that shit, dude. I was doing everything I could, you know, putting new bait on, changing my line, changing my fishing pole. I stayed away from the ugly people on the boat. He's going to punch someone right now. He's pissed. I do not want to be him right now. When bluefin fishing like that, especially when it strikes like it did, you get a lot of problems. Lines being tangled, people getting angry, some guy's hook getting caught in his finger. As much as I didn't catch no fish, you know, that's cool because that's fishing. One day you're going to catch the big one, one day you're going to catch the little one. But at least I didn't get a damn hook in my thumb like that gentleman. I mean, God motherfucking damn. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was a straight 90 degree angle like that. Yeah, I don't fucking damn damn thing. Thing. It's gnarly, dude. Yeah. He was such a trooper, instead of calling the Coast Guard to come fly him out, he said, fuck it, I'll sit here and go on the whole fishing trip with a hook in his thumb. And man, this was no little fucking hook, man. This was like the biggest goddamn hook they sell, man. That shit was like, you know, the circus guys don't even have hooks that big. But it, he caught a fish, though, so shit. I reeled my line on my rack, and the hood sliding, and I started running in my reel. I hook it up. On my, on my finger, <laughs> the hood. <laughs> At least I'm happy. <laughs> I can hook my fish by hook my finger. <laughs> Where the fuck are you, asshole? There you are. There we go. Look at where I got him the first time. Woo! Straight in the top of his head. Yeah, boy. That's PB right there for me. Today we're making the Thunder Burger. It's a pastrami burger with uh, sliced jalapenos, onions, and a fried egg on top. One of our crew members, Rico, would always bring pastrami down to the boat. He started putting it on croissants. The entire smell of pastrami started filling up the galley. People started wanting pastrami on burgers. So this year with the bigger galley on the new boat, we decided to make the pastrami burger and have that be our specialty burger on the menu. Another special thing about this trip was the ride back home. I think it's a lot different than having your food while you're fishing, because you're almost anticipating wanting to go back on the rail, so you don't really enjoy that food the way that you would if you were comfortable. This is the best burger I've ever had. It is beautiful. Theory is yet proven again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a combination of everything. It's hanging out with friends, it's fishing. You're hungry all day, you're focused on fishing, you're not thinking about food, you're thinking about fishing. So when the time comes to eat, it's just... In the, yeah, it in this case, it just makes see, the end of the day after a successful day like today, it, it connects us, we sit down, we enjoy a beautiful burger, Definitely next level stuff. You know, the cool thing about like today is we fished, we're done, we're on our way home, now we can enjoy our food. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, it's in the middle of it, so right. you scarf it down really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best this way to do it. This is, yeah. yeah. Eating that burger on the ride home kind of hit the spot for me, <laughs> not Ardo. I think it was that corn dog I ate the fucking night before, and that corn dog, man, it just did not settle right. <laughs> I tried everything I could, and all the way at the end of the day, I finally got one, and I was 
fighting it in and it finally broke off. It was my fault because I didn't tie my hook right. And I could see it in the line. So imagine that. He had a tough time battling this thing, man. I, I felt bad for him at one point because it's, I, I know I've been there. When you see rod bending everywhere, you know what you did to get there and you just aren't getting bit. To see that fish break off was the equivalent of a child losing a balloon, you know? I was pretty upset. But Harry caught a lot of fish. I don't know how many he caught. He gave me one. It was cool. Yeah, I'm just stoked uh, today worked out, honestly, man. It, uh, it worked out in our favor. We, we went through uh, heavy losses, you know, a lot of lost fish. But for the most part, I think we came out on top. We landed quite a few. 39 fish, we have five yellowfin. Typically with tuna fishing, the more you lose, the more fish that leaves you. You know, you're not really marking as much. For some reason today, the fish gods were on our side, man. I think each boat has its own special thing behind it. You know, I don't think one is better than the other, but I will tell you this, the Thunderbird guys work their ass off. Those guys make sure you have a really good time. I didn't catch no fish, but I'll go back. That's for sure.